Hello everyone. Good to see you again. Yeah, so good to see you. Thanks for joining up this morning. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, depending on where you are watching from. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for being a part of this uh, this morning. All right. Uh, so I just want to to wait a few seconds till it's um, 10 a.m. my time, right? And then um, we we cut into it uh, straight away. Okay. All right. Um, and now it's 10. <laughs> okay. So again, I say it. Um, good, good morning, um, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thanks for for being a part of this um, today, right? Um, so thinking back, we've we've done recharge now for so <laughs> five months now, right? And I do know that there are people here who have joined consistently every week okay i'm grateful um and i'm sure you're getting blessed right so thank you thank you so much for for being a part of this right um this month has been fast yes um but it's been interesting as well okay from my uh, conversations with with um, some of you, right? I I have seen that many people have reasons to celebrate. Many people have um, great testimonies, um, and I'm I'm just I'm so excited at what God is doing uh, in in people's lives, right? And I'm also excited at the 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 words he shares with us right so that we can also share with you um, i'm so uh, convinced that because god does not waste resources he doesn't just speak for the fun of it um, he has certain things in mind for everyone that is a part of um, what we're doing and i strongly believe that um, when 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 these blessings are being poured out you will not be missing in jesus name okay um so let's let's cut to it uh in the last few weeks so last weekend we 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 had a great time of prayer and intercession um because that was what we we're led to do right so um that's all we need to do, okay? Uh, but in the previous weeks, we had shared on um, what to do when God doesn't seem to make sense, when everything doesn't seem to make sense, and um, we had shared on um, finding God again. Uh, basically, many of the things we have shared on this month have been um, things that God said or did that show us that he doesn't think on the same wavelength as the rest of us. He doesn't um, reason like we do, okay? Uh, his ways are not our ways. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, uh, verses 8 to 9, he says that um, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways, and his thoughts higher than our thoughts, okay? Um, so these, these are some of the things we've shared on uh, in the course of this month. Um, and what we want to share today is along the same lines, okay? Um, yeah, so I'm seeing people commenting on my haircut. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So today, um, I want us to share on a very, very big issue, right? 
Um, again, it was one of the things Jesus said that probably did not make sense at that time. Okay, but we can we can look into it. So I'll read from John chapter 16. John chapter 16, I'll read verse 5 to 8, and then I'll jump to verse 12 and read to verse 15 from there. Okay, so if, if you are able to, um, you have a Bible with you or you have a device from which you can read the Bible, uh, please go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you can just um, listen as I read. So John 16, from verse 5 to verse 8, um, this is Jesus speaking to the disciples. He said, But now I am going away to the one who sent me, and not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, uh, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you, and when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. Verse 12. There's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truths. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. Um, all that belongs to the Father is mine, and that's why I said the spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Okay? Um, so this is what we want to share today. And if you want to give the title, I titled it God in Us. Okay? God in Us. Lord, as we go into your word today, we receive insight, we receive guidance, and we receive faith in our hearts. We receive understanding also in the name of Jesus. Lord, let this word make us better and put us in a better relationship with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, so, the scripture we just read um, was one of the last conversations that Jesus had with his disciples. Okay, it was a sad conversation at the time, but when you look at it in retrospect, um, it was possibly one of the best conversations. Okay, so Jesus here was telling his disciples that he was leaving them, but he did not expect them to be sad. Okay, now this, this was interesting. This was very interesting. If anyone here has ever lost a loved one, then you know what we're talking about. Um, if anyone here has ever had maybe your best friend, maybe your spouse um, going out of town for a long while, um, and then they say to you, don't, don't be sad. Now, that, that's, that's quite funny, right? Much less when this person says, you know what, I'm leaving forever and I'm not coming back. Um, and then he, he said to them, why are you guys grieving? I don't expect you to grieve just because I said I'm going to the Father, right? Um, so, but, but this was funny because... This was the Jesus because of whom Peter, James, and John left their lucrative fishing businesses, right? They, they were doing well in business. In fact, for James and John, the uh, Bible says they left the business, they left their father and went with him, okay? So they, they, they left, in fact, Peter said, we left all and followed you. This was the Jesus they left everything for, okay? Um, Matthew left a lucrative job as a tax collector right um the tax collectors in 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 israel at the time where i, I tried to find a way to to um describe them in our world today but, but if you're watching from nigeria then maybe um a top customs officer or something right um so their, their job was quite prestigious, but also opened them up to a lot of kickbacks. So they got a lot of money. Okay, so Matthew left that one and followed him. Nathaniel was one that would never trust anything from Nazareth. He was one that said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He changed his opinion and followed Jesus. Okay, um, this Jesus was the reason that the disciples were stars. They were the re he was the reason anybody ever reckoned with them. Right? It was the reason people want to look for them because they would then tell them we want to see Jesus. Right, they, So they were, they were stars, they were big boys. It was the reason they were never hungry because there was always somebody somewhere. 
to feed them. And if nobody was feeding them, um, he could turn anything to bread at any time. He could multiply food for them. So it, it was the reason they were never hungry. It was the reason no one could be sick around them. You remember the story in Matthew 8. Uh, Peter's mother-in-law, Jesus went to his house, saw that the woman was ill with a fever, and then he healed her, and then she served him, right? So no, no one around them could be, could be sick, okay? Um, in fact, I, I once heard a pastor say that Jesus, that Peter denied Jesus because Jesus had healed his mother-in-law, okay? And he didn't like that. Anyway, that's, that's an aside. But Jesus was the reason no one could be sick around them, okay? He was the reason they could cast out demons, was the reason Peter could ever walk on water. Jesus was the reason for the unbelievable experiences they had when Peter, James, and John were at the Mount of Transfiguration in Mark 11 and, and, and they saw Jesus meeting with Moses and Elijah. There was no other way they could have seen such sights, right? Jesus was the reason they had those experiences. Jesus was the reason that every great thing happened to them. And now he says to them, I'm leaving. But don't be sad. He says, I, I'm done. But why, why are you guys grieving? It doesn't make sense that you should grieve. When he explained to them, he said it was good for them that he left. And this, this is quite interesting. So I, I'm, I'm going to digress a little bit here. He said it's good for them that he left, right? And um, that, that's, that's the truth, actually, that sometimes um, what we are holding on to is not necessarily the best for us. Sometimes. What we feel we cannot do without is what we actually should do without. Okay? Sometimes something is coming, but we cannot receive it because our hands are already full with what we already had. Okay? Um, so he said it was good that he left okay um sometimes we, we just realize what we cried over was something we should have actually rejoiced over okay so it, it was good it was good for joseph that he was sold into slavery it was good that peter had not caught any fish the day he met jesus it was good um probably that you lost that relationship it was good probably that you lost that job because sometimes um, great things just happen um, after the worst seems to have happened, right? So Jesus was saying to them that a loss can actually be a gain if you pay attention to what is coming instead of what is living. And someone might want to think about that again. If you pay attention to what is coming instead of what is living, um, then you might find yourself rejoicing instead of mourning. But that's, that's just a digression. So Jesus was saying to them that it's good. It's, it's good for me to leave you guys because something good, something as good, if not better, is coming. Okay? So the question that the disciples would be asking would be, okay, so with all the wonders that you did um, and all the platforms that you gave us, what, what can possibly replace you who can possibly replace you um what better alternative can you possibly give us right and so he then talks about what was better the holy spirit the holy spirit <clears throat> um so i'll give a little background here so in matthew chapter 15 um and the first time i i ever heard about this scripture it was from um, my lecturer in the university who was a traditional worshipper. Okay. Um, he was saying to us that he didn't understand why Africans would um, be following Jesus when Jesus himself said that he was only sent to the Jews. Right? That scripture is in Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 um, where a woman had gone to meet Jesus to say, hey, my daughter is demon-possessed. I need you to please heal her. And Jesus said, I'm not sent to you. She was a Syrophoenician, so she was from Phoenix in those days. So um, Jesus said, I was not sent to you. I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? Um, 
That was in Matthew chapter 15. By the time you get to John chapter 12, uh, there was another story of people from Ethiopia that had gone to see Jesus. So they went to the disciples and said, we want to see Jesus. The disciples went to him in John chapter 12, um, between verse 20 and 24. That's where the story was. And Jesus said these popular verses to them. He said, now the time has come for me to enter into my Father's glory. He said, except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, he abides alone. He said, but when it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Okay? So what he was explaining in the first place was, for me, as this physical Jesus, I am only sent to the Jews. But when the time for his death was getting closer and people from other nations were coming to see him, he then explained that it was through dying that he would then be multiplied and be available to the whole world. Okay, so as a physical being, he could only be in one place at a time, but as a spirit, he would be omnipresent. In other words, he would be present everywhere and at the same time. Okay, and this was why he was telling his disciples that his departure was for the greater good. That you may not see me physically anymore. You may not um, um, stand beside me as I ride on a move. You may not be able to put your head on my chest and all of that. Uh, but something better is available, but it should only come after I leave. Okay, and so he called this Holy Spirit um, in Greek the paraclet, okay, which means comforter, encourager, or counselor. He said these descriptions um, because he knew that in this world we would need comfort, we would need encouragement, and we would need counsel. Standard. We need all of this at every point in our lives. Okay? And these things are best generated internally. It's a lot easier when counsel comes from within, when comfort comes from within, than when you have to go look for Jesus in another nation or on a mountain. Okay? So this was why he told them it's better for him to go. Okay? This is Jesus admitting that we will have issues. We will face pain. We will face discouragement. We'll be foolish in some of our decisions because that's just the way life is. But he said, I would not leave you as orphans. I would not leave you without someone to lean on. I would not leave you without someone to, to hold on to. I would not leave you without wisdom, without counsel. And so he said, somebody was coming to replace him. See, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God came upon people either for prophecy or for battle. When God wanted someone to fight to lead Israel's army and conquer enemies, the Spirit came upon that person. Or when God wanted someone to prophesy, then the Spirit came on that person for those functions and then lifted again. And so you saw something who the Spirit would come on and did kill. Um, the Philistines and it kill a lion and all of that and it break chains and all. Um, he consistently made stupid decisions because the Spirit came on him for those purposes and left afterwards. And then he was on his own, which was what Jesus meant by "I will not leave you as orphans." Okay. But this Spirit, when it came on them for battles, came on them, for prophecy, <clears throat> made them respected and highly influential. And it often puts them in leadership positions, right? Um, so the Spirit of God was known to give supernatural abilities and was therefore not commonly given to people in the Old Testament. This is the reason that the disciples valued it a lot more because they could see the link. <clears throat> they saw when the Spirit would only come on you and lift off. And they saw when the Spirit came in flesh and they stayed with him. And now they were going to see when the Spirit would then move into them. So they could value it, they could treasure it because they saw all of it. Sometimes we are not able to value it because we did not see 
what was obtainable before the spirit became available to us okay um of course maybe like you sometimes i wish that i had jesus physically with me right um maybe i mean if 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 you were sure that jesus was somewhere that this is jesus right live um, you probably never want to leave the place because of all you know that it can do okay uh, so i i wish that sometimes but apparently there's no need for that if we believe what jesus told his disciples because he said that now watch this he did not actually leave he only changed location he did not go away he went into us that's what he was telling them okay and if you believe that then it means that we have a better deal than before so what does this all mean really it means that our relationship with jesus has become more personal than public back then Zacchaeus wanted a relationship with Jesus, he had to go climb a tree. Okay. The uh, blind Bartimaeus wanted a connection with Jesus and he had to scream. Okay. Relationships with him back then had to be public. But now it's become more personal. So we no longer need to go to the mountains or to the seas to find him. We no longer need to climb on trees for an audience with him. We can reach him in an instant because he's right inside our hearts. Now this, I admit, can be difficult to understand because of the power we have given to our physical eyes. If we don't see it, then we don't believe it. Okay? Yes, we've given so much power to it. But then if we only believe what our physical eyes have seen, then we do not need to believe in God at all. Because not one of us, no matter how holy, will say, yes, I have seen God before. So if all of our belief is in what our eyes physically see, then there's no point at all. There's no point. Nobody here, I'm sure, has seen current before. Some of these things just happen. They happen and then we see their effects, but we don't see them. Okay? And so you can't possibly say, and that's what an atheist would tell you, that I, I do not see God. Okay? I don't. And we cannot afford, that's why we are called believers, not seers. So, you can't afford to say that your judgment as it concerns God has to be only what your eyes see. And so when you ask um, an atheist, so how did the world come to be? Um, and some will tell you that it was, it was a big bang, right? That, that happened. And I was, I was listening to a, a message um, some weeks ago and um, the late man of God Ravi Zacharias said that how can you say that a dictionary came to be because there was a blast at the publishing house he said there is so much information in the dictionary so much detail so much arrangement in the dictionary that one blast in a publishing house could not have made it happen right so he said if a human being with a lot more information in our dna a lot more intricacy in our wiring if you can say that a human being came about by a single blast then you wonder why didn't a dictionary come by a single blast? Why didn't any invention come by a single blast? What you see is limited, standard. Radio frequency, you're changing channels and all of that. You do not see the frequency. It's the effect you get. And for us as Christians, we need to understand that it's the effect of the Holy Spirit that we need. We do not need to see him to believe him. 
Okay? So, it's now a more personal relationship than a public one. And we must cherish it. Okay? The Holy Spirit is in us to make our lives better. But of course, like I said, we ignore him because we cannot see him. We make his voice quiet because we live in fears. And our spiritual senses are getting dull. Okay? And the charge today, the simple charge today, is to allow him lead, comfort, encourage, and teach us as Christ promised. It is with him we can run a safe race. It is with him we can get instructions. It is with him we can, we can understand situations. It is with him we can have deep conversations um, that are beyond us. It is with the Holy Spirit, God in us, who Jesus explained would do within us everything that he did around us. And the charge for today is for us as Christians to connect again, right? To connect and tap into that inner power that we have, that inner witness, that inner wisdom, that inner comfort that we have. The charge today is to connect with him because really there is no Christianity outside of that the rest of it is morals all morals okay and there is no religion in the world that promises a Holy Spirit that promises that God will live inside of you that promises constant encouragement constant guidance constant leading this is what makes Christianity what it is. And we have to quicken that relationship again so that it can lead us again, comfort us again, guide us again, encourage us again, teach us again, you know, take us by the hand and help us make decisions that make our lives better. It is very, very critical. And that's all we're sharing today before we pray. So how do you do this? Um, so here is the image I saw while, I mean, when I felt God wanted us to share on this today. It was the image of someone that has a lot of treasure, but does not know it. Okay? Um, Bible says, he that is held in honor and does not know it is like the beast of the field that perishes. Okay? Um, and that's what I saw that there's a lot of power a lot of energy a lot of wisdom a lot of grace locked up inside of us that we silence because we do not see him okay and we want to run this race on our own what Jesus explained in John 16 is that the Holy Spirit would tell us stuff from him he painted a picture of three people and we understand the three as God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He painted a picture of he and God having that conversation and then the Holy Spirit hearing about it and engaging us based on that conversation. In other words, with the Holy Spirit inside of you, you can know the will of God, which would be a big boost for your prayer life. Okay? You can know the wisdom of God. You can know the steps to take with Him inside of you. And that is so much treasure that we ignore to run around looking for counsel, especially from the wrong people. You know? Um, I, I said to somebody um, some years ago, I even wrote an article on it, when the person said, how come there were so many fake pastors um, around? I said, well, I don't know, uh, but there are two things I would say about it. I said, number one, the fact that there is a fake shows that there is an original, right? Fake is proof that there is original somewhere. 
Um, if original didn't exist, then you wouldn't know there's a fake, right? Then I said number two. I said fake pastors will always be needed as long as they are fake Christians. The fake Christians need somebody to feed them. Okay? The people that would not want to know God for themselves, the people that would not want to hear from God, the people that would not want to engage the Spirit of God, the people that would not want to read the Word of God, those people will be liabilities on the pastors that want them to grow. And so they go to the people that would say to them, you don't need to grow. I'll just take advantage of you and make you feel good. And so I am talking today to people that want that relationship with God, the one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. So should you ask someone to pray with you? Absolutely. Should you ask a pastor for counsel? Absolutely, yes. Should you ask for advice and all of that? Should you ask someone um, to, to intercede on your behalf? Absolutely. All right. But the great thing about having the Spirit of God active inside of you is you know where to go. You know who to talk to. You know who to team up with. And you know what to believe. And when somebody begins to share with you things that are harmful to your Christian faith, then you get a quickening in your spirit because that spirit is alive inside of you. Okay? So how do we engage the Holy Spirit? Of course, the first one is to be born again, right? Is to be saved. It's then Acts 19, right? And Paul was asking, are you guys born again? Yes, do you have the Holy Spirit? They said, we, we didn't know there was the Holy Spirit. Said, no, 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 no. Now that you're born again, you can have the Spirit of God. And then he did an impartation on them, right? And they were filled with the Spirit. Okay. Again, I should answer, it doesn't have to be a celebration. It's not everybody that had hands laid on them to receive the Spirit. And so I'll, I'll get to that in just a bit. Okay. Ask God, once you're born again, ask God to restore your relationship with Him. It is very, very important. David saw it and screamed in Psalm 51 and said a big prayer that we know today, creating me a new heart, renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. It is very critical. This was a king that seemingly had everything he wanted. And then he realized that if that spirit left him, he was in trouble. Okay? So you want to ask God to restore your relationship with him. And then you'll be more conscious of God um, in your prayer and in your decision making. To take a step back and say, Lord, what are you saying? Holy Spirit, guide me. It is very, very important. There's something else you can do that is priceless. Practice quietness after praying. Even if your prayer is for three minutes, two minutes, five minutes, practice quietness afterwards. Expecting to hear from him. It works, I tell you, 100%. It works. Okay? Obey the instructions he gives you. When he says, do this, do it. Risk it and do it. Okay. Um, how am I sure he's the one? At the beginning, you won't be sure. Again, that's the way it works. If I speak with you on the phone regularly, then with time, we don't need to introduce ourselves to each other again. We, we don't need that. Because over time, you already understand my voice. But initially, you may not. And that's the way these things work. So he will speak to you. Your mind will speak to you as well. But as you do the things he says, the voice gets sharper and louder in your head. Okay? And then you can engage better there. Okay? Obey the instructions he gives you. Pray in tongues. Um... It's, it's, it's another cheat 
that we get as Christians. Romans 8, 26, Paul speaking to the Romans Christians, he said, likewise the Spirit helps our infirmity. He said, for we do not know what to pray. He didn't say how, right? How is the technicalities? Paul said, we don't even know what to pray about as we ought. He said, but the Spirit gives intercessions. He makes intercession for us. The groanings that can't be uttered, groanings that can't be explained, right? So as long as your mind is not wandering, you are there speaking in tongues, you are praying correctly, even though you don't know what you're saying. Because you can pray and miss, but you cannot speak in tongues and miss, because even you don't know what you're saying. So it just sharpens your senses, actually. It sharpens your spiritual senses as you do it um, regularly. And then fast too. Fast. What fasting does is that you consciously deprive yourself of some pleasure to focus on God, right? Um, many would rather fast when they have a problem and fast towards certain solutions, right? Uh, but it's the same as just praying to God when you have problems. Someone said if you only pray when you're in trouble, then you're in trouble, okay? Um, when you have that habit of praying and fasting, depriving yourself of some physical needs so that your spirit man is more alive, then when God is saying stuff to you, when the spirit of God is saying things in your heart, you are able to capture them more easily. Again, I should say, fasting is not drama. Fasting is not for human approval. It's not to boost your esteem. You don't go somewhere saying, oh, I fasted seven days, I fasted six days. No. No, no, no. That's that's not the aim. Okay? Um, I should say this. Uh, please forgive me if it assaults your mind. But there's nowhere in the Bible where the instruction is that your fast must be from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. There's nowhere that the instruction is that you must break at 3 p.m. or 6 p.m. or 12 noon. No, it's not there. Deprive yourself. Pray to God. You will have an idea of when to break this and then you do it. Fasting may be about food. It may be about, I know of people that fast, they fast with their favorite TV shows or whatever it is. Just taking a break from something that fits your flesh so you can focus on your spirit. And when you're doing it, be conscious of what you're trying to achieve. Praying to God and spending time in his word. All right? These are very, very critical. Again, I say, um, the Holy Spirit is our cheat code. Right? Is is. Is me standing in front of you, you saying only me, but then I know that it's not only me standing here. Okay? When the Bible talks about the madman of Gadar, it is one story I still find very amazing. This man had demons inside of him. And the Bible says he he would be chained and he would break all the chains. Break free. He, he, had, he had a lot of demons in him. But it's interesting how you have spiritual beings inside of you and they give you so much energy, so much power, so much strength that you can do crazy things. Break chains like that. It just shows you, actually, that spiritual forces are real. And if the bad could make someone that strong, the good can do a lot more for you. You can be a lot more intelligent. You can be a lot smarter. You can do many fantastic things by being conscious of the Holy Spirit in you. Now, the difference between the madman of Gadara that I talked about who was possessed with demons or with an evil spirit and us 
that have the Holy Spirit. The main difference is that while the evil spirit does not take permission, does not need you to allow them, they just take over and destroy. The Holy Spirit is at the mercy of our will, at the mercy of our decision. He awaits our approval to do the things he needs to do. And that's why we're sharing this today. That's why I believe God has asked me to share this with you today. Just because there is a lot he wants to do in your life, but you are silencing the voice that should lead you out. And I trust God that from today it will be a different story. From today um, we begin to experience victories where we had defeats before. We begin to make wise decisions where we made foolish ones before. We begin to be led by the Spirit instead of the flesh. Because the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, right? And so um, maybe there's someone listening to me. You have consistently made silly decisions and you have entered from one level of trouble to another and you have become desperate and you're doing crazy things. Even you know that you're doing crazy things, but you just don't know how to get out of it. And trusting God that what we've shared today will help you, will deliver you, and you will hear voices within you, uh, the right voices that will lead you in the right direction in the name of Jesus. All right? So I, I want us to pray. Okay? I have um, a little bit of time, so we'll, we'll pray. And all of this prayer is around what we shared today. Okay? And the first thing I want you to say, as sincerely as you can, whether you're going to scream where you are or you're going to pray it silently, it's your call. But what I ask for is sincerity and focus as you say this prayer. And it is, Lord, restore me to you. Okay? Restore me to you. Um, I saw a story. Um, I, I read a story just yesterday in, in Zechariah. Okay, and it was it was a it was a beautiful story. I think it's Zechariah chapter five, um, where the prophet had a vision and saw the chief priests in Israel at that time. After they had come back from exile, his name was Joshua. So he said he saw Joshua standing before God and wearing a filthy garment. He said, and then the accuser, Satan, the word Satan actually means accuser. He said, the accuser, Satan, who regularly accuses men before God day and night. He said, he stood there and was telling God, see how dirty this garment is. He said, God then told Satan, rebuked him and said, how can you be accusing somebody I'm just trying to deliver? And then, according to Zachariah's vision, God took off the garment, the dirty garment on the priest, and put a clean one on him. In other words, God exchanged his sins for his righteousness. And at that point, there was nothing else Satan could say. Why did I come up with, um, why did I give this um, story, this scripture? It's just to remind you that it doesn't cost God anything to restore you. It doesn't cost God anything to wipe away your sin. It doesn't cost God anything to, to, to draw you closer, to change your garment. In case someone is here thinking, well, I know God loves me and all of that, but I've gone too far. There's nowhere you can go that God isn't present. And that's why I thought to share that. And maybe it's just for someone, just one person. And it's that assurance that it doesn't take God a minute to take off whatever filthy garment you're wearing and give you the clean one. So I want you to pray, Lord, restore me to you. Restore me to you. I've been close to you before, now I feel far. You were number one to me before, now you're number five, number ten. I don't even know where to place you now. Lord, restore me. I want you to pray wherever you are. Father, restore me, take me back. In the name of Jesus, be the most important to me again. 
be number one to me so that every other thing can take their rightful positions. Be number one in my life in the name of Jesus. Lord, in all of the drama around, in all of the noise in the world, with everybody trying to assume importance, everybody is saying what they want to say, me hearing a lot of voice on the media, on my phone, and all of that, Lord, be number one to me. In the midst of all of this chaos, Lord, let me see you in the name of Jesus. Be the first in my heart. Be the one that matters the most to me. Be my most treasured relationship again. Restore me to you. Create in me a new heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Do not take me away from your presence. In the name of Jesus, don't take your spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to know you again. I want to love you again. I want to serve you with my whole heart. In the name of Jesus, I want to enjoy my time with you. I want to walk with you instead of just working for you. Restore me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, so, we will say two more prayers and then, um, but I would like to encourage you after now, um, these prayers, and that's why we pray in every meeting. It is something I'd like you to pray all week, right? So the one we do here is just two, three, five minutes, but I'd like you to do it all week, okay? As we trust God for answers, right? Good. Um, so I want us to pray again. Um, lead me from here on, right? That was what Jesus told his disciples. He said, the Spirit will guide you, right? And lead you and um, teach you the things I'm saying. Okay, I, I want to read a verse in Isaiah, Isaiah 58. Okay, just give me a second to pull that up here. Isaiah 58, verse 11. So if you can, if you can find it on your Bible, in your Bible on your device, that would be great. So you can also read it and maybe bookmark it. Okay. Isaiah 58, verse 11 I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, the Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry, and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Okay? So I'll read that a second time. It says, the Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry, and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Okay? So that's it. It starts with the Lord will guide you continually. And that's what I want you to pray about. Lord, guide me. Lead me. In the name of Jesus, lead me by yourself. You know the good path. You know the wrong path. The Bible says that there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is destruction. Lord, you know this way. You know the way that is good. Lead me. Lead me, be my shepherd, so I shall not want. Lead me in the name of Jesus. Guide me to the right path in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know you were the one that told Peter. You said, go catch fish. The first one you see, there's money in his mouth. You were the one that said that. Lord, you were the one that told the disciples, go into the next village. You see a donkey there. You know where the resources are. You know where the blessings are. Lord, I am done doing this on my own. I am done living my life by guesswork. I am done making my decisions based on news. I am done making my decisions based on my emotions. Lead me. Guide me in the name of Jesus. Preketu suzi ante likedija, proka sati kande lihe proko to sati preketisti ante lika prahandush. Lead me, Lord, lead me, guide me. Let my ears be open to you. Let my heart be in tune with you. In the name of Jesus, deliver me from error. Deliver me from confusion. In the name of Jesus, deliver me from mood swings. Lead me and help me to follow. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right. 
And then tied to that is the last one. Holy Spirit, have your way in me. You may want to speak in tongues here. Okay, speak in tongues for the next few minutes. But it is Holy Spirit, have your way in me. You cannot be carrying such power, such awesomeness, such resources inside of you. And you get nothing for it. You cannot. Okay, so you want to pray. Have your way in me, Holy Spirit. And if you can speak in tongues, this is a good place to do it. Lift your voice and pray. Le prada tu se hande le kete preka tu sokoto ni ke preka ta su se kandi ya. No tu su se kete ya preka du se hande le kete ya pra ha tu se kandi. No su se ni ha pra ha tu se kati le ha preke di si antuni etri ke si ati ya. Holy Spirit, you are my number one relationship. You are the most treasured in my heart. Have your way. Have your way in me. Have your way in me. Lead me and I will follow. Speak and I will listen. Show me and I will watch. Ne prada to the capra hat to say the hili and alike to second alike to yam prodosh. Ne kuzi hantali he to the canto sakatali he prekete susikande. Nukuzuti andele kete sikata prakata susikande li he prokotoste. Holy Spirit come alive in our hearts, in my heart, in the heart of everyone watching at this time. Come alive in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Help us, guide us in the name of Jesus. Help us to make decisions better than we ever did before. Increase our wisdom. Increase our understanding in the name of Jesus. Like Jesus promised, teach us. Teach us things. Teach us according to his will in the name of Jesus. Make us super. Make us amazing. Make us more efficient than ever before. Help us to know where to go. Collapse years for us. Deliver us from errors in the name of Jesus. Matuze he prekete suza kante liye produce. Nikatuse kate liye prekotoza atati endele. Antusa ampra katasu kati edi amprohodosh. Have your way in me. That I will no longer be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. That I will not be tossed to and fro by every trend, everything I see on social media. Lord, lead me. Help me to connect to that still small voice inside of me and to block out, blot out the world and the noise around in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, I'll just pray. Um, I'll pray over everyone. For the next few minutes and then that'll be it for today okay father we are grateful grateful for another opportunity to share your word another opportunity to hear from you lord i pray for everyone um, that is a part of this everyone listening everyone connected to us everyone that will watch later on on youtube i pray holy spirit come alive in us Lead us, guide us, be to us everything that Jesus said. Let our lives be different because we have you. Let our decisions be wiser because we have you. Let our steps be better aligned because we have you. In the name of Jesus, as we cross into a new week, Lord, let it be clear that there is a spirit in us. Let it be clear that the inspiration of the Almighty gives us understanding. Help us to go to the right places, to say the right things, to get the right results in the name of Jesus. I hear concerning someone listening to me now that there is a level that you are trusting God for and God is moving you a level above that one. In the name of Jesus, he says he's about to surprise you. Someone saying, Lord, people around me have things working for them. You know, people have been sharing testimonies, good things. It just looks like things are happening for everyone in your circle except you. And the Lord says that it's coming big. It's coming big in the next few weeks. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss it. Father, I thank you. I thank you for that person <clears throat> that has been depressed all week long and they don't even know why. Let your spirit of comfort come alive in them. In the name of Jesus, let joy burst out of that person. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every discouraged heart now. Everyone that feels helpless, weak, it just looks like you can't get anything done. I declare a renewal of strength in the name of Jesus. God's spirit launches again in your heart. And I declare that even from today, you will begin to find strength where you only saw weakness. 
you begin to find joy where you only saw sadness in the name of Jesus. I declare no evil will befall any of you. No plague will come near your dwelling. I declare that because the Spirit of God is inside of you, if there is danger on the road, he will take you away from there. If there is trouble at work, he will take you away from there. In the name of Jesus. Someone listening to me, before the end of this month of August, God is blessing you with a significant relationship. Receive grace for recognition. In the name of Jesus, someone that has been living under the fear of death, you are delivered today. Amen. That fear is taken away Amen. in the name of Jesus. And someone here, the Lord will have me tell you that where you will find yourself by the end of this year is way better than where you expect. Right now, you are trusting God to still achieve something by the end of this year. But the Lord says he's doing a lot more than that. And I pray for that person here who says, well, I want to pray. It's tough. I want to study the word. It's tough. I want to connect with the spirit. It's tough. I speak grace into your life now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will take you by the hand and he will make crooked paths straight for you. In the name of Jesus. And someone here is having a horrible relationship with their father. And you are trusting God to heal it. The Bible says the hearts of kings are in the hands of the Lord. And like the waves of the sea, it turns it wherever it wants. God is touching every heart involved. Amen. And peace has come in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, so thanks everyone for joining today. Um, <clears throat> That's, that's what um, I believe God has asked us to share today, and I do hope you've been blessed. So in about an hour from now, this video should be on my YouTube channel. So if you want to watch it again or you want to get someone to watch it, please just um, uh, tell them to go on my YouTube channel and um, check it. Um, you may also want to subscribe so you get notification when I post content on my YouTube channel. All right? Um, in a few minutes, I'll also post the link on Instagram especially uh, because this video will still be available on Facebook. I did mention last week that we created um, a subdomain, um, recharge.tolacity.com. Okay, and all I need you to do if you want to get correspondences from us is to just um, go there, recharge.tolacity.com, and just put in a few information and then you'll be a part of our mailing list. You know, we'll be able to share um, some content with you. Okay, thank you very much for being a part of this. Um, we trust God that our prayers will be answered and our lives will change for the better in Jesus' name. All right, love you all. Bye for now.